From Tally to Cali, it's time to wake up. Warchant.com is your ultimate seminal sports source. And this is Wake Up Warchant, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. One more corner pocket. Now here's Warchant.com's ass on Hunch of Andy and Corey Clark. Come on, shake your body, baby, do that conga. I know you can't control yourself any longer. Come on, shake your body, baby, do that conga. Wake up. What is up, everybody? It is Wake Up War Champ, presented by the Corner Pocket Barn Grill, Tallahassee, Florida. Coming up on today, you just hung 40-plus points, 600-plus yards. You're feeling good. Maybe not. Let's argue about it. Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Barn and Grill in Tallahassee, Florida, cptallybar.com. That is the website. You can check out their daily lunch specials, but it's Victory Monday. So as you know, it's time for a burger. Build your own burger, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. over at the Corner Pocket Barn Grill, Angus Beef. Top-notch cow, folks. Dig in. You'll enjoy it. You'll love it. Then tomorrow, Tuesday, is trivia. Check that out. Thursday night, bingo. Always something going on at the Corner Pocket Bar and Grill. Always a lunch special every single day. You can't go wrong. cptallybar.com is a website. Pull your phone out. Camera app. Barcode. Snap. Take a photo. Takes you right to the website. Warchant.com. Ultimate Assemble Sports Source. Hey, thumbs up, everybody. Come on. We're slacking. Thumbs up. Big dub. Noel's back on the win streak here, Corey. As we enter Miami Hate Week for some, but it's just Miami Week for some of us. Mm. But it's you know Miami Hate Week for a lot of us too. How are you, Corey Clark? I'm good, buddy. I'm good. How are you doing? Good, good. You, you sound. We sound so crisp and loud right now. In my ears. I've never heard us sound so crisp and loud. I don't know what's going on. Hopefully, everybody uh, is enjoying the audio quality today. We try. We strive for excellence on the show. You know. So hopefully, we're we're delivering it. Um, it just felt almost, you know, off the record here, Gene, turned down the radio. Almost kind of feel like I'm stealing from the company this past weekend. I love noon games, Corey. The fact that I, I got home. I know you home, do. Oh, I know you do. I'm sorry. I mean, I don't know. People get upset. Let, can't Aslan be happy for something? Can't Aslan like something? Um, but, man, to get home at like 6 o'clock, and I picked up dinner, and I got mm. all night to, to kind of soak in and watch Georgia put it on Florida, watch my kids fight with Lane and Jimbo. That was tough. Right. Um, right. Yeah. But it's just amazing. I'm like, wow. I didn't even, and I worked actually today. I don't even remember any of it because it was over so quickly. So I appreciated all that. Your weekend great, though, I assume. Right. Yeah. Yes. Good. 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 Yeah. And I had I had a couple buddies in town. You know, I had my friend Brad, who's a Georgia Tech fan. Uh, uh, Shane Creech, who I told people about. Creech. It was funny because he doesn't listen to the uh, the podcast at all. But a couple of people came up to him. It's like, oh, you're the guy that doesn't talk. Hey, you must be Shane. You must be Corey's friend. He's like, what? He didn't know that people that I had even talked about him on the show. Uh, but yeah, they were in town. Um, so that was the cool part is like usually when I have friends in town, which isn't often for games, if it's a if it's a night game or even a three thirty game, I feel like by the time I get to hang out, like meet up with them and hang out, the night's over. Yeah. It's Sunday. Mm -hmm. Then they're going back to they're going back to Atlanta. So it was cool that like, yeah, I got to hang out with them like five thirty or six. I was hanging out with them and we we had a long night. We had a long Saturday night. I'm not gonna lie. Go. Uh, met up with some people at Corner Pocket Saturday night and Friday night that were real that were fans of the show. Um, the one I rem I think his name is Sean. God bless. Please be Sean. Um, I was a little bit, you know, I was a little bit, I wasn't, a, I wasn't drunk. I was just buzzed. Mm. But uh, yeah, he's a firefighter uh, from New York City. Stand from Florida up. originally. Stand up. Yeah, with his buddies. They were, all, they were all in town. They come to one game a year and they chose the Georgia Tech one. But uh, yeah, he's a firefighter in New York City. Um, so we, uh, and he said, he asked if I was coming to Syracuse. I said, nope, that's an IRA joint. Mm. But he was very, uh, very complimentary of the show, um, and said anytime where he's gonna give me a t, he's gonna give me a shirt, another fire, a firehouse shirt. All right. And he said, because you know I was worried about it with our other friend that got us the shirt, T Giddings, Thomas Giddings, T Giddings, T Dog, and I and I, I, I worried about wearing it. He's like, no, no. It's like, he goes, as long as you're not wearing the uniform, Thanks. we don't, we don't care about. It. It's not stolen valor. It's not you pretending to be a fire, a firefighter. Okay. It's just you wearing a, it's you showing support. We, we know people can look at you and know you're not a firefighter. Um, so yeah, so whoa, that, it was whoa. shots fired from no, the fire. No, no, he didn't. He didn't say that, but I know he was thinking it. Okay. Um, but yeah, so got to hang out with some people, some friends, uh, and some fans of the show. So that's always fun. Okay, let's get to it. Usually, the formula on the show, we let Corey explore the space. Um, mm. I'll pick a spot here and two to disagree with him, which I think will probably happen here. Proud of you guys out there on Warchant.com's Tribal Council. Healthy discussion, healthy debate, healthy argument. A lot of. What is your guys' problem? You guys always are finding something to complain about. We just won. Shut up. Uh, then a lot of people like, man, but we looked gross in the first quarter. Kind of sick of that. How does that happen? Explain how you look bad coming off of a bye. 
Uh, so I, I like that that even sort of keeled balance we got from the fan base. But I'll let you go ahead and uncork it, Corey. Forty-one to sixteen, the win. You snap a three-game losing skid. You improve to uh, three and three now in conference play. You're five and three. All your opponents looked very vulnerable. That was the the real big takeaway. Although we yeah. can maybe argue a little bit about Florida Georgia too and see how that goes. Six hundred forty-two total yards. You hold Georgia Tech to under six hundred. Uh, sorry, under three hundred yards. Um, you know. Where do we begin when we start to unpack that Florida State overwhelmed Georgia Tech but came out the gates looking a little bit uh, wobbly, which didn't really sort of add up to the way we had felt about this team the previous seven weeks? Yeah, You know, look, I, I think there could be both. I, I would say I don't know that they looked wobbly. They, they just, again, the red zone, the trip to the one-yard line was an abject horror show. It was just a disaster. Like, why are you fumbling that ball? It wasn't that bad a snap. Why are you calling Everything. two timeouts? Why are you calling that? Why exactly. are you going away from your offense? You, you're calling a timeout. You haven't called another timeout. Your quarterback is pitching a fit, like uh, publicly in front of everyone, screaming at somebody or someone because th they can't get lined up correctly. All that is absolutely well within the rights to criticize, as is, as I wrote in the column and tweeted, like you're giving away that you're in the Wildcat with 20 seconds left. Before they're even out of the TV timeout, Jordan Travis is splitting out wide. Why? Like, why not everybody be in the huddle? And then Jordan Travis splits out wide. So they don't know that it's going to be a run, an absolute run, because you're snapping it to your running back. You're also snapping it to a running back that, as far as I know, has not taken a snap all year. All that was bad. All that was bad. That play was horrific. It was the worst play of a lot of bad red zone plays this year, in my opinion. And it came on the heels of... Um, Preston Daniel not being able to make a catch on not a great throw on third down, the first drive, and then Kentron Portier dropping uh, a pass on fourth down. I jinxed him. Sorry, Kentron. My bad. Yeah, man. The, so those two drives back-to-back -back were gross. And I shouldn't even say the drives were gross. The ends of those drives were awful. But, man, what, what else did you want for the rest of the half? And you had the ball, I think you had the ball 10 times in the game. You never punted. You scored seven of the ten times. The other two, you got deep into their territory, and your running back fumbled twice, and your receiver dropped a pass. But everything else you did offensively, you dominated that team. You had 360 yards to 24 in a half of football against a real ACC team. And we can all roll our eyes and say, yeah, Georgia Tech's terrible, Georgia Tech's awful. Yeah, sure. Horrific. I've watched Georgia Tech play the last month. Nobody else is doing that to Georgia Tech. Mm. And Florida State, isn't. this isn't 2013 when we just dismiss, in, you know, when we dismiss dominating efforts, like, well, that's what they're supposed to do. They got all these guys going to the league. Well, this team doesn't have a lot of guys going to the league. And they, they, they outgain someone by 330 yards and a half. A team that has a, a competent defense and had been playing hard for their coach. And you went and completely dominated them. In all, in all facets, except it's fair to say the scoreboard. Like, even after all you'd done all that, you'd outgained them by 330 yards. Um, you, you'd given up one first down in a half. In a half. Four minutes into the second half, it's 24 to 10. And you're facing third and 10 at your nine-yard line. And, buddy, if Jordan Travis doesn't hit Micah Pittman on that throw on third and 10 for an 11-yard gain, rolling to his right, throwing back. Yeah, nice. And then later on in the drive, he hits Johnny Wilson down the sideline on another third and long. Man, you are really in a game at that point. You are absolutely in a game. So I think when people complain about the way things looked at times, you think about that kind of stuff. Like, what if Micah Pittman, what if Jordan Travis doesn't make that throw and you're punting out of your own end zone, only up 24 to 10, after outgaining a team by 330 yards, they're getting the ball at midfield, and now you're going to get really tight, and you're going to pucker up because you you had a chance to put this game away, and you you didn't. But they didn't do that. He did convert it. They did go down the field and score again and again and again. So overall, I don't know. They covered. They put Correct. up 640 yards. They won. Like, I don't know what else to, in totality, not specifically, because we can nitpick with a bunch of different things. But when you take a step back and look at the product, Outgaining a team by 370 yards total, putting up 646 yards, which is the most they've had in an ACC game in six years. I feel like that's something to be, uh, you know, kind of proud of and not just dismissed and be like, ah, it's not good enough.
Man, at Florida State in 2022, when you're trying to build something, I thought that was plenty good enough. I like that. That was you almost had an argument with yourself there. Not a lot of really yeah. counterpoints to be made. I like that. It was good. It just, you know, I think part of it here. That's what I do, Aslan. That's yeah, how I t- well, it's hard for me to sleep. It wasn't a complaint. It was just simply pointing yeah. out the greatness that that was just laid out there for all of us. I, your point is is totally valid, man. Like Georgia Tech, we've we've seen them here the last month ever since they let go of Jeff Collins. Man, they, they beat a competent, decent Pitt team. They beat a competent, decent Duke team. Right. Which Jeff Sims should go to the bargaining table, ask for more NIL because Absolutely. without him, they looked horrendous against Virginia, and they they look so terrible. And I don't want to take away from what Florida State did defensively. I mean, they, they played that first half with I don't know they could have pulled anybody out of the any able-bodied human being, man, even a woman, uh, between the ages of probably seventeen and twenty-five, and they couldn't have operated that offense any worse than that guy. But you know, I don't think people are really complaining about. The defensive effort that was just a, a, a weird opponent uh, the, the the whole setting of it all you know noon game coming off a bye coming off the losses that team they don't have their quarterback dreary day you're wearing white lids with red tops and red sure. you know i know it's garnet everybody but follow me here uh, just a lot of weird stuff going into that and you're coming off the bye and you kind of you, you stumble out the gate but to your point yeah. man you, you hang all those those yards and, and points ultimately and that's what matters and, and i think where we're at now and I think Tom mentioned it here on one of the times we had him on the show. And, you know, I, I definitely agreed with him. It was a, a thought that I had, had previously is that, you know, this climb, we're, there, you're going to hit certain spots in this rebuild now. And you've mentioned it. Ira mentioned the wrap-up, too, that, listen, now look at Florida State's remaining schedule. If you lose any game on this schedule, you're, you're losing to a team that is not as good as you, we believe. That's a credit to Mike Norvell and the staff and the amount of talent they went and were able to acquire and infuse in this roster. And I think some of us, rightly or wrongly, are now at a point where, okay, man, we understand how bad things were when you got here. You've gone ahead and done your job and gotten us out of that hole. And now we're now we're looking at like, okay, we're we're beyond just trying to look decent against teams. Now we're at the point where we look able to win the rest of our schedule now we're starting to think all right man how do you perform in certain situations and i think that's where we get these these red zone moments we get into this end of game moment against nc state that kind of follows some people uh fourth down decisions against you know clemson so i think and it's not a it's not a, a an overly critical thing I, I think we're happy we're like okay man we've we've put the taggart era behind us we've put you know, losing those margins of victory in 2020 behind us, that we're not going back to that. We're, we're not going to backslide to that at any point. Now it's trying to figure out how is this team going to look when he does get more talent, when they do start playing more meaningful games against big-time teams. Will will these moments that we're seeing, will, will these creep up again? Will these, these, these tight moments in, in red zone sort of form and happening. I think that's where the criticism is coming from. I think everyone is totally ecstatic to the fact that they hung 600 yards, 40 points, and we're still a little bit miffed or, or not pleased ultimately yeah. overall by. I think that's where we're at right now. Yeah, but I, I think there's, look, I you know, I had a couple, well, I had one person in particular that texted me and they completely disagreed with a column I wrote saying, he you know, he thought they looked awful. And I'm like, I, I, don't, I don't understand what Florida State team you've been looking at that you thought a 25-point win and 640 yards in a game you never punted you could say that this Florida State team looked awful. I guess that does mean that he's raised the bar. Because two years ago, buddy, you would have you would have done cartwheels just to beat Georgia Tech. Because you couldn't. And here we are two years later, and people are upset, are you know, looking with a jaundiced eye at a 25-point win where you outgained them by almost 400 yards. And the la- again, that, the last time they had a game like that was 16 against Syracuse, where, when Dalvin up there, when Dalvin broke it, the all-time rushing record, Florida State rushing record. Mm. I think they had 650 yards, and Syracuse had 230. Wow. That's the last time Florida State beat up on a team like this. So, again, I, I don't know. Yes, if you want to nitpick everything, but me, as somebody that covers this team and talks about this team and writes about this team, a three-game losing streak where you haven't won in a month, I'm not going to sit there and hear today on this show, but also in a column – just completely, and I did. I, I went after the, the the thing at the goal line, and the, the onside kick it was ridiculous. Um, and then McLean coming out of the end zone right after that. All that was bad. McCall it was a horrible stretch. McCall? McCall, sorry. Yeah, Sam McCall. Um, um, I, that was all, they're both number 11, though. You see where I, right. where I yeah, made I'll that mistake. Yeah. Um, 
that that yeah, there there's reasons to be like upset at like specific plays, but overall, if you can't appreciate a twenty five point win, and it wasn't like you were it was a close game in the fourth quarter, and then you kind of put them away late. I mean, literally, you should have won by fifty. You should have been up thirty five to nothing in the first half. That's how much you dominated. There was nothing fluky about the way you completely dominated an ACC team. And that, again, we're you hope this program is going to a higher place where you will not be able to, this will just be a ho-hum win. I don't know that Florida State in 2022, coming off the seasons they've had, is in a place to just completely overlook or dismiss a, a, a blowout win. It, where you put up like historic numbers. You know, that's the first time they haven't punted in a game in 12 years. Since Jimbo's first year. Like I said, it's the first time they put up that many points in an ACC game since 2016. And before that, it was like 2012. Like, they had put up that many yards in an ACC game once in a decade. And I feel like maybe instead of lamenting too much about the nonsense at the goal line or an onside kick or the defense, of course, giving up a touchdown to start the second half, maybe appreciate that you're, you might just have if they can figure out what they're doing inside the 10-yard line, you might have legitimately, literally, one of the best offenses in the United States. You just, other than red zone offense, which is not good, they are, according to PFF, they're a top 10 offense. They put up 28 and almost 480 yards against Clemson. They come back after a bye week and put up 640 against a team that uh, has a pretty decent defense. And on top of that, probably left what? At least... 7, 10, 13 points out there? They should have scored 55 points. That's good, right? I mean, it's better than, like, it's not good that you're leaving points out there. I get it. But it's cool to see what this potential can be. Like, as good as they were, as many yards and points as they put up, they still didn't come close to reaching what they could have done. You know, they should have scored 55 points against Georgia Tech. And again, Georgia Tech isn't Duquesne. They've got guys. They've got some decent def defensive players that at least until Saturday were playing hard and cared. Um, so, yeah, man, I, I just thought overall, Jordan Travis threw for 400 yards. You ran for 250 yards. Not quite. I'm sorry. I, don't, I, I round up, Aslan. Yeah. I round up. Yeah. Although yeah. I would have liked them to – he can't throw a screen pass on that right. last drive, Mike. Yeah, yeah. No, you're you right. got him in the game. Yeah. You're already up by 31 points, and you got him in the game. You can't let him throw – a little screen pass to get over four bills. Come Say it for now. Mario. I have Mario had that distinction. You're right. Yeah, Mario is going to get that 400. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Jordan Travis throws for, uh, you know, 396. You run for almost 250. Uh, Benson looked good. Toa Feely, other than, you know, pretty costly two fumbles there, um, had made some really nice plays, looked good. Rodney Hill mm. is somebody that's going to be something. We're telling you guys uh, there, there is a chance he's going to get some more and more meaningful carries as the season goes on. Um Defense gave up one first down and a half against an awful offense, granted, but still, they it's not, you know, I guess they could have given up zero first downs, but they gave up one. Um, their only points were on the nonsense 70, and on that play, on the stupid fumble at the goal line. Credit to Jordan Travis for running 70 yards downfield to make a tackle. Now, looked like he got hurt on the play, because, of course, it's Florida State. Uh, but he was, it's not just that he was 70 yards from, you know the the line at like the line right. of scrimmage where the ball was snapped. Split he was so far wide. He's he was, on the pylon, man. He was basically in the student section, yeah. and he ran out of the student section to go chase that kid down and save a a, a touchdown and force him to a field goal. So credit that that's something that should be commended. Overall, again, yeah, man, coming off a bye on a three game losing streak against a team with nothing to lose, and you start off how you start off. And that is completely warranted to be upset with that. Like, why does this team, why why are you dropping a fourth down pass, man? That's just, it's it's like, that's what Florida State does. Why are you dropping a, a decent snap from the one-yard line in the Wildcat? That wasn't a horrible snap. Yeah. Why are you dropping that? Against Miami, you can't do that. If you're at Syracuse and it's that's 20, That's it. That's that's part right, of it, though, right? It's 21-17 to 17 and you're at Syracuse and you're going in for the winning score. You can't not catch that ball, man. I get all that. But to come back from that, because once that happened, once that nonsense happened at the goal line where they, instead of you scoring seven, they score three, so it's a 10-point swing, I'm like, yeah, man, they're going to be in a game in the fourth quarter. It just had all the feelings of that. And no, instead, you're playing your backups in the fourth quarter. So I liked, in that, resp in that regard, I liked the response. I liked the response after the, 
the, the, the touchdown drive right after Georgia Tech kicked the field goal, you went on a, whatever that was, a 24 to, 24 to nothing run. And then when they scored their touchdown after the onside kick that you apparently were coached to be ready for but still weren't, um, you go down and score a 91-yard drive. That, to me, is a really good sign uh, for this offense and for this team, for this particular team, because not only what it looked like Saturday for your offense, but as you just talked about, who you're playing. Syracuse lost to an average Notre Dame team. At home. At, at, home. at, at home. Average at best Notre Dame team. Gave up 41 points. Miami could be still be playing in Charlottesville as you're listening to this show and not have scored an offensive touchdown. That's who you've got this week. So when you Florida, you know, Florida had a run there for about seven minutes where they were in that game. Otherwise, nothing real great about that game either. So when you look at who you've got left these these last four games, man, you you could and dare I say should go four zero. And nothing that I saw Saturday makes me think otherwise. You dominated an ACC team, which is exactly what you were supposed to do. Well said. Well said. I mean, I think for me, the upshot of this past weekend, again, I mean, you know, these the, the coaches admit it, the players admit it, they did not play their best game. And I guess, you know, maybe part of it's like, all right, well, at what point is this all going to click? But again, everything didn't click, and you still had 642 yards, and you scored 41 points, and you won comfortably. Um, a lot of that, though, was a product of playing a, a pretty inferior opponent. Um, but but the fact of the matter here with them is going up now against Miami um, I, and seeing the way and how poorly they looked and seeing how human Syracuse looks. The real upshot this weekend for me, too, is like, all right, we I think we still kind of know what Florida State is. I, I don't know how much more they have to grow here in the next four weeks, but I don't know how much they really have to grow to be able to run the table, which is crazy to say. Right, correct. Right, isn't that the thing? Yeah, I mean, because, again, man, like, because Syracuse does not look, I mean, I, Syracuse is still going to be a tricky game. I, the oh, the quarterback situation there is pretty muddled right now. They've got to figure out, when they figure out what they're going to do with their quarterback, we'll see it, because Schrader apparently entered that game injured, was terribly ineffective, then they brought his backup in, and he made it a little bit close before Notre Dame made their adjustments. But I man, Miami is just an absolute train wreck. They are they are terrible. Offensively. Offensively, yeah. Well, I don't I mean yeah, I guess. I mean Virg yeah. I mean yeah, they held Virginia to three points in regulation, so we really can't dump on And the you know they'll too. and you know they'll play hard because of the setting and who they're Stakes, playing. Yeah. Their defense will play hard uh, on, on Saturday, but if they're playing Garcia, I mean I, I don't know what the race is to. Twenty, seventeen? And the way this offense has looked really all season, except for the second half against NC State, but the way this offense has looked the last two games in particular, I mean, you have to think this this offense is good for high 20s, right? Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Florida State, 16th in total offense in the country, 487 yards. Scoring offense, 48th, just a fraction over 32 points. Total defense, 22nd, mm. allowing only 323 yards per game. Scoring defense, 37th, holding teams under 22 points at 21.9. And that should go up, you would think. Like the total D, I mean, you're, just, you're about to play Miami's offense. Mm. So you hope that you're not giving up 400 yards to that thing. The clutch shots, the biggest hits. It's time for the Zaxby's Indescribably Good Player of the Week. You heard the man time for the Zaxby's Indescribably Good Player of the Week. Four yards shy of 400. Corey will give it to you. I won't. Still love you, though, Jordan. 24 of 38, 396 yards, three scores, and he preserved the ball. Arguably, not arguably, emphatically the best statistical game for Jordan Travis. Looked absolutely sharp. Uh, that touchdown pass to Lawrence Tofield in the first half was just an absolute beauty. Dropped right in the bucket. Uh, he said he prepared angry, or did his coach say that he prepared angry? His, his coach, coach said he prepared that, yeah. angry. Uh Jordan, you're such a nice guy, but we do like it when you're angry. 396 yards in the pocket, throwing the ball around. Um, didn't have to do a lot of things with his leg. Shows that he is a quarterback indeed. Jordan Travis' performance, my Zaxby's indescribably good player of the week worthy award. There's a lot There's a lot of options to go with here. Leonard Warner, Jamie Robinson, I thought, had a really good game. By the way, you're allowed to call a pick play. You're going to call that offensive pass interference on Johnny Wilson? Come on now. J Jamie Robinson was just slammed into, and that's why Georgia Tech scored that one touchdown in the in the third quarter. But I'm going to go with uh, C.J. Campbell. Walk-on yeah. C.J. Campbell, um, our former walk-on. I'm not sure if he's still a walk-on or not, but he definitely was. Um, running back, we were told in August that he was lost for the season. 
because he had a he suffered an injury. I think it was in a scrimmage, Aslan, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, broken fibula, right? Isn't yeah. that what he said yes. on Saturday? Lower leg. Yeah, lower leg. Uh, you know, lower extremity injury that we got uh, specified as a broken fibula. And then um, turns out he's back in eight weeks and running hard and scoring his first career touchdown. That's really That was really cool to see behind a lot of young offensive linemen, but running hard and scoring a touchdown. Can't ever take that away from him. Um, that was a that was a really neat moment uh, for a team that you know after a three game losing streak you're looking for all the neat moments you can get and that was really cool to see through the air on the ground the Knowles look really good Jordan Travis CJ Campbell our Zaxby's indescribably good players of the week what do we think about what happened in Jacksonville Corey let's look around the country a little bit we can maybe come back we'll, we'll dial it all back into Florida say it obviously but um, I don't know I wonder if or I wonder if George I wonder if wake up dogs. Uh, I wonder if they're picking a bone with Georgia looking vulnerable there in the second half and letting Florida crawl back in the game. I didn't like that. I wasn't a fan of that. So maybe I'm down, trending down on Miami. If you're a Miami person, I'm trending up on Florida State's chances in that game. Maybe I'm holding tight on what the Florida game can be because, you know, if we're going to sit here and I'm not celebrating Florida resiliency, but obviously responding in a game has uh, been a big sort of keystone of Mike Norvell's tenure here. Uh, Florida was left for dead. I mean, they got humiliated in the first half. They clawed, clawed back and made a one-score game. Or uh, should we go back to Aslan's thought about maybe a team letting off the gas a la Clemson against Florida State a few weeks ago? Maybe that's what Georgia was doing. Yeah, I think that had something to do with it. Like, Florida did go down and score on the first drive of the second half, but then Georgia gives them the ball on the next very next play on a fumble, um, gives up a uh, field goal, and I think – Stetson threw an interception after yeah, that. Correct. And then they go and hit a big play. And then it was almost as if Georgia that reset Georgia. And then you saw the team that was up twenty eight to three came right back out and outscored them the rest of the way fourteen to nothing. And uh kind of do they dominated fifty minutes of that game. Um so no, I you know, look, man, Florida State certainly isn't a, a guarantee to beat that Florida team. Uh the quarterback can run. Uh, he can make a few plays. They have some athletes on defense. That will not be a cakewalk by any means. But, um, no, nothing I saw Saturday makes me think that that game got harder. I mean, they lost They you know, they you know lost by 20. They were down 28-3 at the half. And, look, man, I, I look at this Florida State team, and clearly if they played Georgia, they would lose. If they played Ohio State, they would lose, probably big. I don't know. I'm not sure – just the the way this offense moves, that I, look, I think there's 30 teams in this country that could beat Florida State if Florida State played poorly. But I also think there's probably only, I don't know, man, four teams that Florida State couldn't beat that would just blow them. And I don't even know if that might be too high when you just look and say that team would blow Florida State off the field. I think the way their offense is playing and the way Jordan Travis is playing, and I know, we again, we can nitpick. The throw to Preston Daniels on, on third down. Yes, I would like my tight end to make that catch, clearly. But it wasn't a, he didn't put it on. It wasn't a great throw. It was a, it was a good enough throw, but it wasn't a great throw. And there were some other balls that weren't quite thrown great. The one to Deuce Span, I think. Or maybe Deuce ran the – it was hard to tell. I know they were talking to Deuce after he came off the field. But overall, man, when you have a quarterback that's playing – like that, that Jordan Travis can play – and think about the th the touchdown to Ja'Kai Douglas. That's a great college football quarterback play. Mm. That's just a great play. That's not his first read. He he gets outside the pocket, puts it, makes a really nice throw on the run for a touchdown. That's, those are hard to defend. And the point being, when you have a quarterback that's playing like this with some weapons around him, Trey Benson, other than a couple runs, I really love the way he ran. Toa Feely, we've talked about him. The fumbles were a bummer, sure. But he is a weapon. You look at this offense, man, and I'm not sure you, you go into most games and go, no, they have no chance. I think Ohio State, they would have no chance. I think Georgia, they probably have no chance because that defense is just, that defense would be good enough to limit you, and then their offense can move the ball. And then Alabama, probably. Who other, Tennessee, maybe too. Yeah. Although I think yeah. you'd score on Tennessee. And I think if you're playing in a neutral site or if you're playing Tennessee at home, I think that's a game in the fourth quarter. But that, that offense is. Man, Josh just, Heupel, man, just, good night. They just good neutered grief. Mark Stoops, man. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they so. But I think because of the way your offense is playing, you would have you would feel like you could be and should be in every game. I just think that, man. I, I just I, I don't know that you look at teams on in this country like two years ago. You could have looked at forty teams 
and said Florida State has no chance. Now I think you look at four or five. And uh, so that's that's cool, man. And I think so much of that has to do with the quarterback. He doesn't make horrific mistakes. He can make plays. He didn't use his legs at all against Georgia Tech because he didn't have to, but he still sliced them for 400 yards, man, which is by far the most yards they've given up passing this year. Not even close. Um, and Johnny Wilson dropped a touchdown. Micah Pittman dropped a touchdown. Uh, they had a, that crazy Cam McDonald play called back because of the ridiculous, well, I guess they scored on the next play anyway, on the throw to Toa Feely, on that ridiculous Johnny Wilson offensive pass interference call. But his, his receivers let him down. And it had three or four more drops. And if you want, I guess we can count the Preston Daniel one too, but he had four more horrible drops, and he still threw for 396 and three touchdowns. Like, I think we, we need to remember, like, you've got a legitimately good college quarterback now. And when you go into the Orange, not the Orange Bowl, what are we, what, is it still Hard, hard Rock? Hard Rock, yeah, Hard yeah. Rock Stadium. When you're, when you're in Sunrise, beautiful Sunrise, Florida, uh, Miami next Gardens. Saturday night. It's Miami Gardens. Miami, whatever we gonna call it, Aslan. Quick, correcting me. Let me talk. I don't. I don't care if I'm right. Um, so when you're in Miami Gardens on Saturday night, I think when you're in Syracuse on Saturday, and I think when you're in Doak Campbell Stadium the day after Thanksgiving, even I don't care what Mel Kiper says. I think you go into those games feeling you have the best quarterback on the field. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a good place to be because it's been a long time since Florida State could say that. But after these last two games in particular, especially following the disastrous last throw in Raleigh, for Jordan Travis to come back, and we can, we, we can nitpick about and split hairs about some of the throws and plays he made against Clemson. Dude totaled 350 yards of total offense against that defense. The way he's played against Clemson, the way he's played against Georgia Tech, the way he's played for much of the season, you don't have to qualify it anymore. He is one of the best quarterbacks in the country. In this offense, the stats you just read, the fact that they're number eight in the country according to PFF in efficiency for offenses, you have one of the best offenses in the country, you have one of the best quarterbacks in the country. Going into these last four games, even though your defense is probably average, a little bit above average maybe, that's a good place to be, man. I, I, I just, I, I, what, I, what I saw Saturday, the way you kind of just completely went up and down the field, you converted eight straight third downs. Some, they weren't all third and ones either. I just thought that that's what you needed. That's exactly, in my opinion, what this offense needed and what this team needed to flush that losing streak, to get, a, to get out of their heads a little bit when it comes to these third downs, when it comes to getting tight in the red zone, get it tight in a game because a team's cut it to 14 and now you're third and 10 at your own nine. You went and made plays when it mattered again, felt what it was like to win again, score a bunch of touchdowns again, and I hope in – I hope it does, but I really think it can propel you to averaging 35 to 38 points a game the rest of the season. And if you do that, by God, you should win all four of them, right? I can't I can't imagine a world in which Florida State gets, yeah, like uh, any of these teams that I'll love on, nah, maybe, nah, yeah, I never had Syracuse. No one's hanging 35 plus on them. Mark Probably not. Well, I mean, Notre Dame did. Um, in I mean, I know one of them was a pick six, and Florida State doesn't create turnovers, so that 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 won't happen. But you you go into Miami, you need to score thirty points. Shoot. That is not asking a lot. I'll take twenty-seven. Duke did it. I don't even think you need that much. But yeah, yeah, but wouldn't, I it mean, hurt. wouldn't hurt. Yeah, wouldn't hurt. Right. You go score thirty. Go score thirty at Syracuse. I really feel like if you do that, and then you score forty in the the next two the home two home games, which you very well could and should. Considering who the defense the the defense you're facing, and considering how good your offense is, is proven to be, yeah, you should win four. You should be four zero. You think they'll, they'll put, put forty really five and zero, and then nine and three? Yeah, put forty on Florida. I mean, don't people do that? Okay. Right. I mean, I mean, LSU That's did a, it. This is a big. Your number. quarterback's better than the LSU guy, and Georgia just did it. And I think your quarterback's better than Georgia's quarterback. Okay. You, I think Georgia's tight end is a little better. Yeah, he's than decent. what you got. Throwing Love that you, out there. Love you, Preston. Yeah. Wyatt. Mark Easton. All of you guys. Brian. Oh, yeah. Jackson. Oh, the whole kid. Keep, keep, keep roll call. <laughs> keep naming guys. them. There's so many of them. Hot take. Florida State is Southern Cal on the East Coast. They would be 7-1 if they had the Pac-12 schedule. There you go. Those I don't. Do you on. disagree with that? I don't think I do. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think so, man. It's. 
it's so hard. Listen, man, I get it. Like, I'm seeing this. They're a hard team to defend. We talked about in the first half of this of this show yeah. this uh, this year about the stress that Jordan Travis puts on defenses. And you start thinking, like, okay, maybe he's not even as good as we're giving him credit for. I think I think so much of the running back throwing game, the, 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 I'm not even talking about swing passes out the backfield. I'm talking even the wheel route stuff. I think so much of it is because linebackers and man coverage – Realize they've got to keep an eye on the running back coming out of the backfield, but they still know that at any point Jordan Travis is going to tuck and run. Right. So even when they see that running back running out, they're like, okay, I, I get it, but let me make sure the quarterback's not doing anything. And then before they realize, okay, he's not, it's too late, man. Lawrence Sofield is streaking down the field. I, I mean, there's probably so many things he does that we do not realize. And then you start thinking, you know, maybe he is he's even better than we're giving him credit for. Um, but then, then you, you – you, he compounded against like that Georgia Tech team was just so poor, just so inadequate as an overall football team. When you when you know your offense has no shot of scoring, but, but I guess I would. Yeah, it's, there's all these sure. weird weird factors of like I don't want to get my heart broken again. Yeah, I put my yeah. heart out there and it got broken again, so I'm just going to ride it out the rest of the year. But but, but there's no arguing Georgia that they Tech, look great on offense. They do. And Georgia Tech had not been a joke the last three weeks. They beat Pitt. Which we I know Pitt isn't great shakes or anything, but they went on the road and yeah. beat Pitt. They beat Duke, who beat Miami by four touchdowns. And then I know they lost to Virginia, but that defense gave up one touchdown, I think, in that game. And they there was a game in the fourth quarter, and their their quarterback just kept spinning into sacks and running out of bounds. Like they fought hard. And they they were in all those the since since the coaching change happened, they had been in games with five minutes to go in the fourth quarter and won two of them. In this game, you're playing your walk-ons. So, again, I, I don't know if that loss just took some wind out of their sails, which I'm sure it did a little bit. They also didn't have – they had in, essentially went to their third-string quarterback, who should have clearly been their second-string quarterback. Uh, he's, what is he's, going on there, man? I Chip mean, Long, the, the, Chris Wink, you figure it out, guys. That was nuts because he, that kid spun into a sack on the first drive of the game. And you're like, all right, yeah, this kid just doesn't have it. But this the, the freshman – the true freshman, Iron, yeah, the Zach yeah, P. You, you see some stuff with him. He's got a little something to work with there. They got the six seven receiver, but um, yeah, that's what like Georgia Tech is not good. I don't know if they'll win another game this year. I know they're going to get the bejesus beat out of them by Georgia, um, but Florida State doesn't typically beat the crap out of those teams either. Mm. They played a lot of not great teams the last six years in the ACC. They've never done that. Um, and, and Georgia Tech had been playing hard, and their defense was playing with pride, and they just got obliterated. They could not stop Johnny Wilson. They could not stop Ja'Kai Douglas, Trey Benson, Jordan Travis. Cam McDonald had big catches. Like, it was just – Pokey had the catch on the sideline. Like, everybody oh, made a play. Oh, that catch was beautiful. Like, yeah. he, it was like the Matrix. The, yeah. Just planted yeah. his foot, showed his core, strong core, Pokey. That's a lot of sit-ups, right? A lot of yeah. – you think he's doing reverse crunches, regular crunches – Hyperextensions, I think. A lot of hyperextensions. Oh, okay. All right. I didn't know. I didn't know what you would do to get your core like that. But yeah, hey, sh shout out to you, Pokey. That was a, that was a nice catch. Taught. Um, drew some drew a pass interference call in the end zone, uh, which was a legitimate pass interference call. But yeah, I just thought overall with, with that offense, that that defense was not a defense that you expected to give up 650 yards, right? Coming into the game, I mean that was that was surprising. I didn't I didn't think I I figured Florida State would punt at some point coming into that game, and they didn't. Yeah, right. They just rolled up and down the field. Uh, so that was cool, even coming off a bye where you could expect a little rust and coming off a three-game losing streak where you can expect a little tightness um, and maybe a little doubt. No matter what Mike Norbell says, you might expect a little doubt, especially after you fumble at the one-inch line and give a team a field goal 70 yards down the other way. So, um, yeah, I, I when, when you see what Jordan Travis is, when you see what this offense can be, when you see what's left with this schedule – I think you'll look at it and be like, man, it would, it would, if you're not at least eight and four, it's a supreme disappointment. Yeah. In my opinion, I'm at the point now after watching what I've watched through eight games where we're one third, we got one third of the season left after two thirds of the season. If you don't at least go three and one in these final four, to me, it's a supreme disappointment. I'm almost to the point where if you don't win four and go four and oh, but I don't think we're there yet because it's still Florida State. It's still a program that has to learn how to close out seasons and close out games and blah, blah, blah. But, man, I, I just think, you know, I think they might – I think they have – maybe North Carolina has the best offense in the conference. 
I think Florida State has the second best offense in the conference, and the defense isn't awful. The defense uh, is awful to start second halves, but overall, like you said, they're top twenty-five in total defense. Um, they're not. They're, they're not um, going to give up a ton of yards and a ton of big plays. They keep you in games, and if you have a and they're healthy comp- and they're getting healthy now, that defense. Yes, baby, absolutely. Back. Jared Verse had and two and a half tackles for loss. Both of those guys, we looked at the PFF on uh, Sunday. They both played exactly 25 plays. Mm. Jared Verse and Fabian Lovett, I think that's great. Uh, they both look to come out healthy-ish, and I think you would almost double that this week. Yeah, I think you want to double those numbers this week. I thought Bethune looked good. Um, you know, I thought Jamie Robinson looked good. It's hard to know about anybody else just because of the offense you were playing. But Nato, man, I, I, Nato, let's let's hold on to the ball too, Nato. We had pick sixes in our hands their first half. Yeah, man, you know. that was tough. Now I know the kid threw it hard, and I know he wasn't expecting the receiver to fall down right in front of him. But yeah, make that catch, buddy. Make that catch. Get a get a turnover. This 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 team needs to force some turnovers. But when you go into Miami, a team that's struggling to do anything offensively with a backup quarterback, most likely, and a team that doesn't feel even after a, that, you know, instant classic of a win in Charlottesville probably isn't feeling great about itself you have the best quarterback I think you have the better defense not by much but let's even call that even right yeah let's say the two defenses are even like they're just it's that's a wash your your offense is so much better than that offense that yeah that's why you're favored by eight and a half points on the road which when do you think the last time Florida State was favored by that much in Miami like 98 yeah Probably, yeah. Uh, it's been it's just two thousand maybe before people knew just how good that Miami team was. But man, that's that's kind of where you are. You would have never in a million. That's why it's so funny, and we'll do it next year. I get it. But when people ask us in August or July or April, who what what games are going to be the hardest? Who do you expect to win here? What what's the games that are going to be the hardest on the schedule? If you'd asked this in August, imagine telling we telling you guys. Oh yeah, Florida State's going to be favored by almost double digits in Miami. Yeah, you wouldn't have believed us. You've been like, "What? That does, no, there's no chance." But yeah, that's what they that's what they are, um, because Miami struggled like that, and I think because I think the gamblers think that Florida State, um, dare I say, is the best five and three team in the country. Aslan, Ooh, what do you think about that? You agree with that? Let's get ranked, everybody. Let's get ranked. Corey mentioned a nine point favor for Florida State over Miami. Over at mybookie.ag, you know sports, you know how to pick winners. Go ahead and do it. MyBookie's got the biggest online selection of odds and contests for all your sports betting needs anytime or anywhere. Sign up free today. Use the promo code WARCHANT. Claim a deposit match dollar for dollar instantly of any amount up to $1,000. Again, that promo code is WARCHANT to claim your deposit bonus. Don't forget the money back special still going on as well. Money back, a one of a kind opportunity to spin for crazy odds on props and futures. Just place a bet, spin the wheel, and get ready to score epic odds on the best teams, athletes, and events. Winners Wednesday, we'll give you our fresh set of picks as we enter our second week of doing the contest. Corey, one up on your guy right here. I went 0 for 3. Sorry, everybody. Uh, Corey, meanwhile, went 1 for 2, which is better than 0 for 3. Uh, I went one for two or one and two. You went one and two. Oh, you uh, you got the Louisville game. We both picked Wake Forest to cover against Louisville. Yikes! They knew something we didn't know. Right? Um, what happened, Sam? What happened, man? Um, you might have. And then what was the other one? Yeah, Miami didn't cover uh, because they won. Virginia was a two point favorite. Um, Actually, as a push, maybe we'll give it to you. We'll give it to okay, you. Okay, good. We'll give it to you better. It was a we'll push. It was a push. Yeah, push. He gets it. It was a two point. So, and then uh, Penn State with a backdoor cover against Ohio State. Now, come on. Now, is it really a backdoor cover when I, the, they were they were up in the fourth quarter? Like they were sixteen point dogs and actually had a four point lead in the fourth quarter. So you're like, well, that's this is it. And then what? Ohio State scored twenty eight points in nine seconds. <laughs> Ridiculous. I don't feel like that's a backdoor cover. Right, I think I right, handicapped sorry. that bad boy right. Okay. Okay. Corey's up two and one. We'll give you a fresh batch of picks right here on Wake Up Board Chan on Wednesday. Miami Week. Mario in his first matchup. This is this is gonna be fun. It's also gonna be really stressful. Uh, at least for maybe two and a half quarters. I don't know, three and a half quarters. Who knows? We'll see. Four quarters. It could game. be the whole game, man. Could be the whole I, you game. know, it's yeah, it's, it's, I mean I I know what I've said. I know that I expect this team to go down there and win, but 
you know, it is it is it's this rivalry. It's, it's going to be a tough team. place to play. We'll, we'll see. You know, it's Mario's developed this sort of reputation, I guess, as a bad in-game manager. I, I think there's some Florida State fans that haven't been all that blown away by some of the decisions on a micro level uh, that Mike Norvell sure. has made. Absolutely. Uh, and this will be a tight kind of contest. You know, Mario was catching it from all corners of, the, of Twitter for, I mean, taking conservative to a whole nother level. Um, Strom Thurmond would be proud of how conservative uh, mm. Mario Cristobal was. Well done, Aslan. Well done. I try, man. I try. Political science major. Stand up. I mean, I think they had third and goal. We were in the actual press conference waiting for Mike Norvell to show up, and I had it on my laptop. And they were. It, it was literally six or seven minutes of real time in which the referees were reviewing a play with some sort of runoff yeah. uh, that was going to take ten seconds. Yeah. Miami declined it because they. I don't even know, but the the clock started back up with forty seven seconds. It was like third and goal at the eight yard line or something, and they let the clock run down to about thirteen fourteen seconds and then called the timeout, and then they handed the ball off. And they got down, I think, to the one-yard line. It was fourth and goal from the one. It was tied at three. You're like, are they going to go for it and try to win the game here? But they kicked the field goal and took their chances in overtime, and it went to four overtimes. And, you know, I, I guess, it, obviously, in hindsight, he's redeemed. Uh, and there's several times I think he punted inside of his own, uh, in, like within the, his own 45-yard line two or three times. Uh, and, you know, that catches you hell in this day and age. But he ultimately was like, I mean, I, I want to drag this down to the ugliest depths of college football and play a really low-scoring game and just trust, I guess, I have a supreme kicker. Maybe my defense a little bit better. I don't have a better quarterback. Uh, but this is this comes back to kind of maybe the bar being raised, obviously, where Florida State has been, where they are now. And, and we get into these moments where you think if you come out the gate the way you did against Georgia Tech, against a team like Miami, which is not – significantly better than Georgia Tech, but there's enough emotion on the line that maybe they find something in themselves to take advantage of these opportunities you give them. It feels like game game management coaching decisions in any rivalry game, but especially this one with these teams where they're at right now, has real potential being magnified, Corey, when we come back and talk about this game in a week. Oh, I, 100%. Yeah, yeah. Look, in, in Norbell's drawn uh, fair criticism for some of the, the decisions he's made uh, mainly play calls inside the 10 or 20, um, but a lot of it. Yeah, I, I get it. There, then there's no reason to be confident that he, when it comes to a tight moment or a big moment in the fourth, in the fourth quarter of a close game, is going to make the right call. Or the, the, it just because, you know, you go to LSU, you go to Louisville, they won both those games, but there were really some head-shaking moments there late in those games that kept them games. And I think when people, again, I think I don't think Georgia Tech was the best example for this, but I, I get it. You're looking for things to, to complain about or harp on as you project for the rest of the season when you play better teams. But, yeah, so if, you're, if you've got a chance to go up three scores at Miami and you've got first and goal or second goal at the half-yard line and you split your quarterback out wide, uh, he doesn't call it a trick play. He was asked about it uh, after the game because I think one of the reporters uh, phrased it as a trick play. And he's like, look, that's, I, don't, I don't view that as a trick play. That's a snap to an athlete, and we're running power. Um, that's not a, like a double reverse throwback. It was just, yeah. you know, it just happened. The kid took his eye off the ball and started running too soon and dropped it. And the counter to that could be, well, you're snapping it to a kid that's not used to taking snaps, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and look, so get it out of the way against Georgia Tech. Now he is. Uh, but are you going to run that again at the one yard line, or is that is that a is that done? Are you, is DJ Lundy going to be back in there? What what are you going to do when you have got a, a second and goal or third and goal at the one yard line? Because we don't know. You going to throw a fade to Pittman? You going to have Jordan Travis out wide? You going to snap it to Toa Feely? There's all these things that they've done that haven't exactly worked out well, and yet you have one of the 15 best offenses in the country. You have one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and you're favored by almost double digits down there. So you're doing some things well. But absolutely, people are are right to wonder in a moment like this, how will he handle those kind of decisions? Because yeah, man, you you don't you're not there's no place anymore for man. Well, they played close; they almost won. Credit to them. Think about where they were two years ago. Think about where they are now. I know he decided to uh, you know to, to kick a field goal from the four yard line down by four. Whatever whatever weird crazy decision he would do. But that, th those are done. Now it's about in-game decisions. 
because we all recognize now at this point in time at five and three in 2022 you have raised this program up where you are not only competitive but are going to be favored in at least four of your last five games and maybe all five and you should go to a pretty good bowl you have still a chance to win 10 games by the way jacksonville bowl representatives were in attendance saturday everybody correct and they man they would love nothing more Mm. Then they do not want Syracuse coming there. I promise you. Or Wake. I promise you they would do anything to get Florida State there. Um, but so you, you're in a place now where th- you've already raised it up now, where now we do concentrate on these late game moments. That's why everybody was so mad about the NC State game. Yeah, that's great. Two years ago, Bailey Hawkman made you look like fools. I get it. But you were in a position to win that game. Your players and you had gotten in a position to win that game and some bad decisions in the second half and then a bad throw at the end of the game and you lost it that's why everybody was frustrated so yes everything is going to be extremely magnified in a game like this in a place like that in a season like this where you feel like you really should be six and two and ranked because i think you're one of the top 20 programs in the country so our top top 20 teams in the country so go play like it hey before we get out of here though aslan because we'll talk about miami for the rest of the week we got to talk about FSU basketball for half a second. Because mm, that's, gosh. that's Jay Billis, uh, where art thou? Yeah. So I retweeted Dick Vital. Dick Vital's giving the NCAA hell for it. All right. He's saying it's a travesty and it should be rectified immediately in all caps. God bless Dickie V for that. But for the people that don't know, uh, Baba Miller, who was their star recruit, 6'10 freshman from Spain, yes, I think. Correct. Um, probably a potential NBA draft pick, if not this year, but the year after, but a ton of skills. They're high profile recruit. He was, his family took money to pay for a flight from Spain to the United States for him to train. This was last year. Maybe they paid the money back, paid the money back. Everybody borrowed money, paid it back, borrowed it, paid it back. He is still suspended for 16 games, 16. 16 games the first 16 games of the year which means he's some he's available sometime in the middle of january by that time who knows if florida state's even on the bubble what they're and understand this is a guy that was going to be in a huge part of the team a huge he's probably the most talented player him and cleveland um are the two most talented like pound for pound talent for talent the two most talented players on the team and you don't get them for 16 games for that and what bothers everyone is that you are? we are living in the world of NIL, where if this kid was from the Bronx or Lakeland or Miami or wherever else, you could have just said, hey, this was part of his NIL deal. Here's, here's $4,000. Use it for whatever you want. But because he's, a, he's an international kid where he's not subject to NIL rules or they're not allowed, I guess, I don't know, right. um, he, he's violated an NCAA rule that is crazy the NCAA even has rules like this anymore because of what else is going on all over the country. But yeah, there are literally basketball players at Kentucky and North Carolina and Duke that are getting millions of dollars. Plural. This kid took a couple thousand for a flight, paid it back. Paid it back. And is out 16 games. Part of it, I mean, this is, they've appealed it. So if you're thinking, well, can't they appeal it? Yes, the, but this has been the final determination. And they had appealed it. Yes. I think before that yes. it was going to be longer. They cut the they cut the punishment. So um, anyway. I, I don't you know, know about I, that. I think it, from what I read from this, the release said, as a result of the denial and based on the initial terms of his reinstatement, okay. you'll be required to sit out 50% of the regular season games this season. It's nonsense, man. This is like straight out of 2004 or 1995 this is not this just does not uh jive with the way college sports is in 2022 it just doesn't i see uh Paige beckers who's that awesome uconn player basketball player who i think tore acl and is out for the year but she's an incredible basketball player again she's in a gatorade commercial yeah she's in a gatorade commercial with trevor lawrence bryce way, she's in a dr pepper commercial right but this kid Paid money back for a trip to the United States and is out for half the season. As soon as they it's found out that it was asinine, a, they didn't know it was a violation. Once they found out it was a violation, they're like, "Oh wow, oh sorry, well we'll pay the money back then. We're on it. Well, here we go. Here it is. Here it yeah. is." 
Nope, but they're out. I so I I'm going to. We're, I'm sure I'll talk to Leonard. I'll talk to Stan Jones in the coming days about it. Um, I I'm I don't. Me and Jeff joked about it sort of at the happy hour on Friday because we we started recording like 30 minutes after that news broke. Um, I I I would be to, if I'm Leonard Hamilton and I'm his age and have accomplished as much as I have and have a kid like this, I would just play him. They'd say, "What are you going to do?" And I'm going to sue the NCAA. They'll. They'll just the games you win will all be taken down. Those they'll don't care the wins. Don't care. The problem is the NCAA does determine who gets in the yes. tournament. Yeah. But I almost to that to, at that point wouldn't care. Like, what if you start out four and five? Like, what do you care? Yeah. Go play that kid, and say, oh hey, whatever, man, whatever. And it, it, then it becomes a national story, and people because right now, yeah, Dick Vitale's tweeting about it. We'll write about it. We've already talked about it, but. Nobody's going to care, man. It's college basketball, number one, and it's also Florida State. So it's not going to get national attention. Well, and it's but, October, too. Yeah, if this yes. happened like in December or February or something. If it happened in March. Yes. But, or if it happened at Duke. Right. But at Florida State in October slash November, it's just not going to be, nobody's going to care. It's going to get lost in the shuffle after, after, I don't know, man, half a day. So, but if you're playing him every day and then having to, having to forfeit every game <laughs> after the fact, it becomes a national story and stays a national story, and you're doing right by the kid. The kid gets to play. But also, I get it. You have other kids on the team that you, you don't want to uh, jeopardize their chances of making an NCAA tournament because you know every win they have is uh, deemed n not a win, and you forfeit. But, man, I just think it, 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 almost, it, almost me it almost necessitates Florida State doing something drastic. Like Leonard, Leonard probably will never blast the NCAA to the point he would in private, the way he would in public. But I kind of wish he would, and I kind of wish he would just flip off the NCAA and say, "We're playing them." The referees are still going to show up. The scoreboard's still going to be kept. These games are still going to count at the time. If they want to go back two years from now and vacate them, go ahead. But they should count right now because this kid. I don't know. Um, it'd be I, cool. I, if, it's if, easy for me to say. It would be cool if one or two of the opposing coaches in the conference were like, "We want Leonard to play that kid. Tell Leonard yes. that when he plays us, he can play that kid, and we're yeah. not going to protest it." You know, yeah. that'd be cool if somebody would step up. I don't know if they will. It'd if you're cool if the ACC what, did, maybe the ACC could step up for one of their yeah. charter members. Come on, Jim. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Jim. Show yeah. us some. How love. about it? How about it? Where's Mark Packer? <laughs> I want this to be part of. Uh, I know there's no Packer in Durham anymore, but they still got that show with that little round table in the basement. Talk about it. I know it's a football-centric show, but talk about it on the ACC Network. This is a travesty. Dick Vitale even said so. Uh, the statement from Michael Alford, Director of Athletics, I'm very disappointed with the committee's decision based on the facts presented. This decision seems disproportionate and inconsistent in today's modern environment. It's unfortunate that Baba will have to endure this penalty. So, I don't think he has to endure anything. I think he just shows up and plays. Or nobody really knows him. He hasn't played a game yet. Right. Change his hair color, give him a different jersey number, and just say he's a walk-on. We call him Mama Biller. Yeah, get him a fake ID. Yeah. Is the NCAA going to check that? No. All right. We'll do a live show at some point this week, but we've got travel going on. We're going down to Miami, y'all. Big game. I would say uh, it's going to be uh, Wednesday. All right. I like it. Firm decision made. Mondays are for talk and press conferences. 1130 in the morning, Mike Norvell will be at the podium live. Check out warchant.com as Corey transcribes the blow-by-blow. Blow. We'll also have video replays of Mike's press conference as well as Alex Atkins, Adam Fuller, and John Papuchas. And then in the coop with Robert Cooper, 730, live on YouTube. Hit the thumbs up. Thanks for listening to us on YouTube as well, everybody. And the Jeff Cameron Show, 1 to 3 o'clock. So back on it, everybody. It's Miami week. The flags are flying. Don't ask us. They're there. The photo's been posted. It is on. Mario and Mike dancing in Miami. Mm. Let mm. us go. For Corey, I'm Aslan. Thank you for listening to Wake Up War Champ, presented by Corner Pocket Bar and Grill.